we're going to do some whole animal work. And we did this work with calves at the University of Queensland. They have a dairy farm at um, Gatton, which is where the uh, School of Veterinary Sciences and Ag Sciences, as it turns out. In their calf shed, they can house up to 44 calves individually. So calves are an H pen, and we had them separated so that the calves that were treated, with two, two groups of 22 calves, the calves that were treated with our product could not touch, could not interact with the calves that were on the control diet. They weren't supplemented with our product. They were housed there for 56 days, and the conditions that they were placed under was the normal way that they rear their calves at the University Dairy Farm. Normal, they had um, milk replacer, calf milk replacer, CMR, and they graduated to a start pellet and hay. We measured feed intake, uh, the weight of the animals, when I mean, it was a reasonably intensive study. Uh, they were weaned off the milk replacer and moved to the pellet and hay. That was done, their, their way of doing that is by assessing when the calves, on an individual basis, now they can't do that if they're in a pen of course, when in a pen they have to do it on an average, but in this particular case, they looked at each calf, and if that calf was able to eat 500 grams more, or more, of hard food, if you like, not heavy milk, hard food, they would have had milk at the same time, for three consecutive days, then they started to wean them from the milk. <coughs> That's the way they did it. And at the end of the study, we, um, we sacrificed six of the, of the bull calves and did some histology. We examined the gut very closely. And we had three from each group, three from the control group, three from the treatment group. Um, we had an ethics approval to sacrifice those calves and do that work. Um, <coughs> we had um, fresh fecal samples from the calves, taken on a two-week interval basis and we had live weight and body measurements also on each other's interval. And this work's been published in the Australian Veterinary Journal and it's uh, in the conference proceedings which were published from the recent advancement from the Animal Nutrition Conference last year. So we've published this work and it's there for people to look at but I'm going to show you the results anyway. Um, I said we sacrificed six animals and just so people are aware, we, you, know, you can't, well, well, we didn't do it, the university actually did this work. When they were measuring things, they did it according to true morphometric approaches, which is you, this is a thin section of part of the gut, doesn't matter which part, but we'll look at it again later. And you overlay a grid and you start to measure in the marked squares. So that when you overlay that grid, you're always measuring the same parts of those slides, which gives you that objective look. And it gives you the opportunity, obviously, to measure the length of a particular structure. And you can do that again and again. And that's the way you start to look at. In our case, we were looking at the development of the gut. So you can look at the fine structure and you can look at things as gross as body weight. So what were the live weight and weighing age results? So here we have... First of all, the live weight and average daily weight gain. Live weight is this one, average <coughs> daily weight gain is this one. You remember that I said it was a 56 day study, so it's 56 days on the x axis and kilograms or kilograms per day on the y axis. If we look at this panel first, um, there wasn't any difference at the beginning, and we wanted that, of course. The, the animals were randomly assigned and then the weights were taken and they were all about 40 kilos of weight. After a week, uh, two weeks, 14 days, you start to see a bit of a separation. So the dark circles, if they look like circles, they're a bit fuzzy, are the control animals and the grey triangles, which don't even hardly see, but they are grey uh, triangles, is the upper curve here. That, they're the Milo treatment or something. And as you can see, the curves begin to separate. They are wider and wider apart. So that by the time they get to 56 days of age, remember there's no difference in the way the animals were housed, cared for, or fed, apart from being supplemented with mildew. By the time they get to 56 days of age, the 
My electrated animals are in excess of 70 kilos, and the control animals are just shy of 70 kilos. And that was significantly different. There was about a six kilo weight difference there, 8.4% as it turned out, and that's significantly different. It wasn't different significantly here, although you can start to see the effect coming into play. It wasn't significantly different here. It was very close to being significantly different there, and it probably would have been if we had 50 calves in each group, but that's the effect of statistical analysis. But it was significantly different at 56 days of age. Now, it comes up later, um, but you'd probably ask, what about feed intake? Let's just assume at the moment that we're not asking that question, but I will answer it anyway. Feed ent intake was the same between the two animals, apart from the supplementary milo. And you start to see that the average daily weight gain begins to separate between the two groups. Remember, this is control, this one with the dark circles, and the dotted fainter line is the supplementary animal. That, the animals that were supplemented, now that has to occur. They have to have it up. If they're eating the same amount, they start the same weight and you get a different weight gain at the end, the average daily weight gain has to start to separate. So that's good. You're putting on more, work, more weight per day to get to that heavier end weight. As I said, the Milo treated animals of 75 kilos at the end of the study, 56 days, and the control animals are just short of 70 kilos. And they were significantly different. And you might recall that I said in the protocols that they use at the University of Queensland's dairy, they wean animals if they can eat 500 grams or more hard food over three consecutive days. The Milo supplemented group occurred at an average of 33 days, and the control group that occurred at an average of 40 days. So they were a week ahead. On that measure, a week ahead of the control animals. Now most of you will know that that's pretty important for the development of the gut, for the graduation of the heart group. We looked at uh, those, those numbers in more detail, of course. That's how we plotted the graph. I want to just focus on this one here. Feed intake was the same. We know that from the p value of 0.34. And I'll just highlight all that. The, the important point, if I can just go back. Oh, I don't need to go back. It's the same point. Um, the important point here is that you can see that the, um, the average daily weight gain does grow, this is just the average over the whole of the study, it grows over time and it accelerates in the treated group as opposed to the control group. And here we have, well there are the two of the veterinary pathologists that did this work and we talk about development of the gut, we looked at not only the uh, gross measure, if you like, of the when they're, when they're weaned onto hard food or wean, started to wean off milk. But also we looked at the finer structures. So this is a piece of the gut, one of the stomachs, the reticulum, the mason, the rumen. And these pathologists kindly measured that. As I said, they measured it using those morphometric principles that I showed before. And they can get length of the papillae and villi in the gut. And the one, that was one of the key measures because these are finger-like projections in the gut that increase the surface area. And the surface area is the important aspect of what can be absorbed. So what did we find? Well, um, we looked at villi length. And uh, well, here we just use the term villi. In the room you might want to call them papillae, of course. We looked at tissue fold length and we found Right throughout the gut, in the stomachs, like the rumen, part of the intestine here, the jejunum and the ileum, um, again, colon, cecum, stomachs here, we were seeing that the villi were longer, the villi were wider, thicker, bigger, fatter fingers, if you like, and longer fingers, increasing the surface area of the gut substantially, but also meaning the gut was developing faster in the face of being supplemented with 
probiotic, in this case, our probiotic, probiotic model. In most cases, and we have the, the, um, the test we were applying here was a p-value of less than 0.05. In most cases, we were achieving that sort of outcome. A couple here very close, close enough to warrant putting them up, I think. And so we knew that the gut was developed. Not only did we know from the way the animals behave, that they were able to graduate on the hard food earlier, we could actually support that by saying the gut was developing faster in the face of being treated, if you like, or supplemented with our product. Myelin. Now that, that was a good finding from us, um, we thought, but it's also been shown in piglets as well by a couple of other people quite recently, 2019. So we found that in the literature and we said, well, that's great. The, you know, the literature supports that finding. If you use a probiotic, so they clearly didn't use our probiotic, they were using others and they achieved the same effect in piglets. It's fantastic, it's very supportive of the work we've done. So what do we conclude from that calf study? Well, simply, in simple terms, if you supplement a calf with a three strain probiotic that's based on lactobacillus bacteria, in our case that would be Milo, they can wean earlier and they they reach, at uh, 56 days of age, they reach a heavier weight when compared with control animals. We also reach the conclusion that the gut develops more quickly and it's better prepared for a different diet compared to milk. Great, we've got a product that works well in calves. It helps calves grow quick, more quickly and it helps calves develop their gut more quickly. What did we do next? 